Мы уже запутались. Там-то я без шапочки буду в космосе. check so um, you can see that the shroud is now in place and uh, the vehicle's re essentially ready to be put on top of the booster and so this is so exciting to see um, to see the vehicle just about ready to, to fly um, there is an American flag painted on the side along with uh, the Russian flag so it's such a privilege to uh, to be looking at uh, the rocket that we're going to be flying into space um, it's a little bit different inside too uh, we have all of the cargo that we're going to be taking with us a lot of our personal items our flight suit uh, medications, uh, some food for the trip, all that is now stored inside, mostly in the Bayo, in the uh, habitation module. And so it's stacked uh, on top of kind of a bench in there, up chest high, and it's pretty amazing to see um, everything in there ready to fly now. So is the vehicle ready for the flight? Yeah, the, re the vehicle is ready to go. So it's going to get uh, integrated with the booster here in a few days. Um, and then uh, guests of the launch are going to get to watch the vehicle get loaded onto a, a, a train car and roll out from the hangar and go to the launch site and get put onto the, the launch platform. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing, kind of surreal to, to see it uh, ready to fly now. Uh, well, number one, um, it's hot here. <laughs> so it's gotten up to 120 uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, so it's a little bit it's a little bit warm, but you know what? It's so exciting to be out here. This is a place where Eureka Garin launched from. We're going to get the launch from the same platform. Uh, there's just kind of this anticipation in the air, and uh, I'm ex I'm uh, just so excited that they get to be a part of it. What are the main? The last question. What are yeah. the main uh, activities inside the vehicle during the four orbit rendezvous? During four orbit rendezvous, well, first of course. Uh, our main goal is just to get into a, a good safe orbit. And so once that's done, um, there are a number of other orbital maneuvers that we'll do to catch up to the space station. And we do that over the course of, of four orbits. And that takes about six hours. During that time, uh, we'll have the opportunity to, to uh, get out of our acceleration couches, come into the Bayo, get a little something to drink, use the, the restroom if we need to. And then uh, we'll get back into our couches during the docking period. We'll still have our, our, uh, our pressure suits on because it's still a dynamic phase of flight. Um, but after we dock, we'll, we'll start to pressurize and equalize pressure between the hatches. And then uh, we're really looking forward to seeing the crew on orbit. Thank you, Chell, very much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you from Nasser. Да, это рулевые, а вот эти маленькие, да. А это сопла, да. один двигатель, четыре сопла.
космонавта Юрия Алексеевича Гагарина, до экипажа, который сейчас готовится к полету, все бывают у нас в музее. Люди здесь были очень творческие, люди необычные, писали песни. А, вот этот манекен Иван Иванович, это примерочное изделие, которое находилось в Нике, а, куда... Итак, дорогие друзья, флаг экспедиции поднимаем. Есть, есть, что будет.
NASA Chief Astronaut Chris Cassidy. Chris, uh, you're back at Baikonur, an important launch coming up. After a two-month delay, it's finally time to fly. Uh, how difficult has the last two months been on the crew, and how challenging will their five-month mission be on the International Space Station? Well, in one, in one aspect, late launch delays are sort of a pain, but in another aspect, they're a blessing. You get, to the, you get to a point where all the training's behind you, you can kind of take a minute and, uh, and relax a little bit, soak it all in, see what's happening uh, with your family. And that's, I think, the point they're at now. But collectively, as a group, the crew has been paying attention to the team of folks at NASA that, uh, and that have been working very closely with our co colleagues here in, in Russia to make sure that this vehicle is ready to go uh, and, and we're, we're at that place now. Chell Lindgren has been training a long time for this mission. What, uh, what do he and his crew bring to the table uh, that will enable them to execute expeditions 44 and 45 successfully? Well, all crews pretty much the same thing. We go through this, the same uh, training and, and ensure that they're, they're ready. And these guys are no, no different. They'll get to the space station and be hit the, hit the ground running. They've got visiting vehicles coming up, potential spacewalks. Uh, science is ongoing every single day, and all, all of that um, just gets thrown into the, the schedule grinder and pops out onto their daily plan, and they, and they just march down, the, march down that timeline and execute. Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration Operations. Bill? It's been a bit of a challenge to get to this point, but uh, Soyuz is ready to roll. How difficult have the last couple of months been, your reviews, and how confident are you of a successful launch? Yeah, we, we spent a long time looking at all the data and working with our Russian partners to understand what happened with the progress to make sure that we didn't see anything from the progress that would cause any question about what we're about ready to go do here with the Soyuz. And, and you know, it seems easy sometimes on the outside, but the details behind, the work we did, the amount of discussions we had back and forth uh, were really, really thorough and, and we're ready to go. So again, it's it's a tribute to the team, it's a tribute to the really the diligence and the, the attention to detail that each one of us pays. Cause we know how uh, precious the cargo is, the crew that's going to fly on this vehicle. We know how important it is. It's our job to make sure we've absolutely thought of everything, we've looked at everything we can, and we're really ready to go fly. So it wasn't easy, but it's, it's nice to see the rocket here, and it's ready to go fly. And now, with this crew ready to embark, how complex will the next five months be to make up for lost time? Yeah, it'll be exciting getting the crew back on orbit and getting back up to six crew. There's a lot of research waiting for them. There's lots of activities that need to be done. Um, it'll be a pretty busy period coming up. So, uh, again, I'm looking forward to the research. I'm looking forward to what's happening on station. Mike Sefardini, the ISS program manager. Mike, uh, it's been a challenging road for the program over the past few months. A couple of body blows to the program, but... Uh, the resiliency is shown here, ready to launch. Uh, what are your thoughts now, and uh, how is the status of the program heading into this vehicle's launch? Well, you know, as a as a program manager, we always assumed we'd occasionally lose uh, logistics vehicles, and we've sort of planned for that. Uh, and so we keep the logistics on board to, to be ready. Uh, we didn't, of course, plan to have as many as we have had in an eight-month period. Uh, but, you know, it's a real tribute to the team. We talk a lot about the crews, the very talented crews that are, that are on orbit, the ones about to fly. Uh, but there's an amazing team behind them that have been considering all these alternatives. And so not only have we kept plenty of consumables on orbit uh, to keep the crew healthy, uh, we've also had quite a bit of research uh, pre-positioned as well. And so during this period, we've been able to keep the crew busy doing, doing important research. And of course, keeping the right food and supplies available, keep the systems going, keep them well fed and, and, uh, and doing well. So it's a tribute to the team that they've been able to do this. And working uh, with our Russian colleagues uh, to extract an answer that makes you feel comfortable about launching this vehicle, how has that process evolved? Well, you know, it's an interesting dynamic because uh, much like here, in, in, much like in the United States, uh, we have proprietary rights of systems and export control issues that you have to be concerned about. Uh, but our Russian colleagues were great. They, uh, uh, they managed to provide us enough information as they're going through this uh, assessment. 
to help us come along with them and understand that the, the anomaly that occurred was related to the different booster that they were using. And uh, so the Soyuz on the Soyuz spacecraft on the Soyuz FG is uh, a system that's tried and true. And uh, based on our assessment of their information, uh, we're very comfortable with this flight coming up. Nearing the halfway point of Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko's one-year flight aboard the station, uh, what does this crew, the crew about to be launched, bring to the table that will carry this expedition and the next one through the end of the year? Well, that's, a, that's an awesome question because what they bring really is themselves. So it's three more people showing up, new energy, new ideas, new things. I think it energizes the crew. It helps them kind of feel like they're taking their next step. Uh, and also it shows them the way they're getting a little bit closer to, uh, to coming home. Uh, so these guys are great guys. All, all three of them fixed the launch, Oleg and uh, Kimia and, and, of course, Chell. Uh, and, and Scott and, and Misha and, uh, and Gennady all know them very well. Uh, so they got new friends coming on board. It's just like you when you have friends over. Uh, it kind of re-energizes you. So I think that's going to play an important role. Of course, these guys will get up there and get going. But, uh, and I think that'll also add a certain amount of energy. And it's, it, I'm sure in their mind they have this stepwise approach to, you know, I get to orbit. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Of course, this crew arriving was a step, and I'm sure they kind of, it's kind of processing in their head that, you know, it's taken me just that much further along the way. Of course, those guys are doing great on orbit, too. Scott and Misha are doing fantastic. So I don't know that they need extra energy, but uh, they'll, they'll get that with this crew coming on.